I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 4th of May, 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. Today we're going to be talking about climate and the seasons, the dry season, the wet season, the rainy season, the summer, the winter, and understanding that and how it affects life and travel right after the bump. I was really hoping to go out for a walk and get you guys uh, some new spots walking around today. Had high hopes and had a really nice day actually with some time to do things and then we suddenly got busy because we got invited to a birthday party and uh, my chef is going to a birthday party and just no one's available and it just really got complicated fast uh, and I got to get things arranged and take people shopping and run around and do a bunch of stuff that I wasn't planning on. Not bad stuff, just busy as my life seems to be. One of the things that I find amazing about living in Nicaragua is just how much there is stuff to do with people. Like you get invited to more parties and have more places to go and stuff than we ever did living in the United States. And I think it's just cultural because people go out they then invite people to go out and just things like that happen a whole lot more and it makes life more exciting but it also means my life is continuously harder to plan than it used to be. Anyway, that's what's going on while I'm filming, so I'm scrambling to get that out, but everything is well. But today I did get asked the question, I'm coming to Nicaragua to visit, I'm paraphrasing, and I'm going to be coming during the rainy season. How does that affect travel itineraries? So to explain that, we're just going to step back and talk about the weather here. I've said this before, but there are two seasons in Nicaragua. And yes, legally we are in, is that a word for this? Uh, legally we're in North America, right? We're on the North American continent, the same as the United States and Canada and Mexico. And we're in the Northern Hemisphere, the same as just about everyone. And so uh, summer starts in late May it goes until September and so forth. Winter is the opposite. Spring and fall are in the middle. But here in Nicaragua and in the region, because the weather does not behave the way that you expect, we don't recognize seasons the same. Here it is a two season country. The idea that there are four seasons and they happen at these certain times is a, is a temperate climate concept. In the tropics, some places recognize that and some do not. Some have no seasons at all. Nicaragua and the region is a two season region. What are those seasons and when are they? So this is counterintuitive, but what they consider summer is during North American winter, roughly overlapping with the middle of fall to the middle of spring. And then flipping that the winter here is from middle of spring over the summer in North America to the middle of fall. However, they are not the hot and cold seasons. The hot season is winter, the cold season is summer, like you would expect given that it's in the Northern Hemisphere, but you have the names flipped. But the reason that they're called that is because the summer is when it is dry and the winter is when it is wet. And when you have rain, it feels cooler even though it's not. So you never feel cold in the Nicaraguan summer. That is what you would consider winter, even though it's a degree or two colder on average than the winter but it's always sunny. It is always just this continuous, pleasant, warm temperature. When the winter comes, you have warmer days, a higher humidity that sometimes gets really muggy, but then it rains. And during the rain, it can get cold because the rain is coming from the high atmosphere and sometimes comes down below 70 degrees. The actual air temperature is not going to drop below 70, but if you're standing out in the rain, you could be pretty chilly at times, especially if you're, if it's like coming off of a hurricane or something like that. We don't really get hurricanes in uh, Nicaragua Occidental where we are here, but you will get the rain from it. And that can be pretty cold because it's up in the Caribbean, goes up in the air, carries for a while, and then comes down. That is why it gets called the winter, uh, and it has to do with the planting season and those things. So that is your basics. Those are why the climates are that way. So it's best to think of it as the dry and the rainy season, because summer and winter and all that gets really confusing, but they do call it that. So be aware if they say summer, they mean the dry season, which is North American winter. If they say summer, they mean the, uh, if they say winter, they mean the, the rainy season, which is the North American summer. It's confusing just to say. Okay, so what does it mean the rainy season though and how does it affect you? Well, let's explain what it's like and you can pretty much gather from there how it's going to affect you, but it's pretty straightforward. During the dry season, again, it's just consistent every day. You could go six months without a drop of rain. Unlikely, you'll probably get a little bit of rain here and there, but it is extremely rare. It is very dry. 
be aware, it basically turns into a savanna. Uh, it's, you, you feel like you're in those pictures of uh, the savanna in Africa, with the, you're waiting for lions to wander by, uh, or tumbleweeds to blow by, right? It is quite dry, and you get tired of the lack of rain, but it is still reasonably humid, not humid, we talked about that, it's like 30 some percent, maybe 40 percent, so you don't feel muggy, but you're not like dry, dry heat, so plants are still pulling, pulling moisture out of the air and such, um, you still have water sources, uh, you're not dehydrating most things in the environment extremely quickly. You as a human will sweat and dehydrate pretty quickly because there is a little bit of humidity and the sun is brutal in the rainy season. It does not mean that it rains all day and it does not mean that it's cloudy all day. Typically, and it does vary, and of course we have climate change, which causes it to sometimes be earlier, later, hotter, colder, like all kinds of things change. But uh, be aware, it's less predictable than it used to be. But basically what happens is you have normally for most of the season, you have sunny, relatively dry mornings. You have, it looks like this. It's not dramatically different. You'll get a little bit of cloud cover. And then in the middle of the afternoon, at least here in Occidental, and it's just a few hours earlier in Managua or whatever, because everything comes from the mountains farther east. Now, if you're in eastern Nicaragua, Blue Fields, Corn Islands, it's different, right? They have different seasons, different weather, everything. The mountains change everything. But uh, what happens is the mountain spine, which runs, it's kind of like Italy. It runs from central, uh, the middle of Panama all the way to the southeast, and it runs through the middle of Central America all the way up into southern Mexico. And, and really, it's part of the mountain chain that goes all the way to Alaska, right? But here, it's a spine through the middle of all these countries. And that spine, as the, as the Caribbean warm, moist Caribbean air comes west, as it does, it travels that direction, it goes up to the top of the mountains, spins, cools. And if you watch the radar, you can see this line of swirling storms all the way through Central America. So all of us, whether it's Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala, we're all getting roughly the same weather at roughly the same time. We all watch it go up. We all watch it spin. And then it gets heavy and falls down the west side of the mountains. And this storm system every day just pours like a like a big thick liquid down the west side of the mountains and which is a spine remember so it's going the whole way up so it's this line of storms that just rolls slowly down and it pours across the country and so we'll hear about it if you have friends in uh in boaco for example they'll be the first to say oh we're getting the storm because it's flat out there but they're really close to the mountains so they get it right off the mountains and then it'll hit uh, Granada, Masaya, Managua. Those places will get it an hour, hour and a half before, maybe two hours before we get it in Leon. Here in Leon, we'll get it. We'll be like, oh, it's Leon. Now it's in Sutiava. We can call the beach. Be like, you got 20 minutes. It's coming. And then there's this wall of storms. And out on Las Benitas, when we're at the hotel, we can't even see it until it's two minutes away. We clear skies. We're like, what? I can't believe it's that close. And then you'll just see this black clouds pour out from over the trees, cover the beach, pouring torrential rain for 15 minutes to three hours and it'll go out to sea and then it'll, it'll wrap up often in the dark because it's by the time you're out at the beach it's later in the day and then you're without storm for most of the nights of course there's going to be days it rains all day there's going to be times it rains into the night but the normal every day is you have a pretty good morning of course subject to, to availability, right? But a typical day during the, during the rainy season is going to be this relatively dry morning, a mid to late afternoon storm, and then probably a clear evening, maybe clouds, but not, not rain. Um, but often you do get some pretty clear views uh, and you get some beautiful sunsets if you don't get the rain right during the sunset because it clears the air of all the dust and mist and haze and you get really, really clear skies. Right now we get the hazy sunsets because it's been dry for six months. So we have extra dust in the air, um, uh, there, there's just not that rain to clear it out. Uh, so it changes that a bit. And it's nice, you get this variety. Uh, but that's a completely different experience. So how does that affect your itinerary? Well, it means if you want to be doing outdoor activities and you want to avoid the rain, there's a really good chance you're going to want to allow more time in your locations. So if you're going to go to Granada, for example, and you plan to spend three days to get in enough time to do your activities, well, you may want to allow four or five if they're outdoor activities because it's going to be, chances are, daylight and part of your acti active part of the day when you're going to want to hide from the rain. So plan on hiding in the middle of the afternoon. That could just be mean going to a restaurant, go to a bar. Uh, there's any number of venues where you can go and hide and stay active and do something fun. At the beach, it's common to go grab a cocktail and watch the storms roll out to sea, maybe catch the sunset or the storm, depending on which one is visible. And that's a beautiful way to spend your afternoon. And then when it's done, you can go out and go for a walk or whatever. Again, sometimes it rains late at night and things flood. So be 
be just always be prepared that rain may get in your way of whatever you're going to do but in general you're going to have it and if it does it one day it's probably not going to do it the next right if it gets it out of its system you're going to have a, a less rain the next day uh, so, but if you're planning on doing indoor activities, you're only visiting museums, you're only going to restaurants or hanging out at a resort, the storm may not affect you at all as long as you're accommodating that it's going to be raining, right? Whatever view you're going to have, whatever transit you have between places, it's going to be done in rain, that's fine. So you may be absolutely great there. It really depends on what you're doing. Uh, you do want to plan around if you're traveling between cities, you're moving from Granada to Leon, for example, one day you're going to want to do that in the morning, not have it during a storm or do it late at night. If you're driving yourself, make sure you, you're able to wait until the storm is over to go. That kind of thing will affect you a little bit. Um, most activities are going to continue just the same. You're not going to have very many things shut down. It's not like the country stops working just because it's the rainy season. It's half the year. Everyone works around it. So for the most part, that's going to be just fine. The big thing that you're going to want to do is not, not adjust your itinerary by any great degree. What you are going to want to do, though, in most cases, is push yourself to get up earlier in the day. Instead of getting up at 9, maybe get up at 6. Get those few extra hours in the morning. Do breakfast extra early. Or do an activity before breakfast if you don't like to eat right away. And then do those things. Save meals for during the storm. That's another great trick. If you can hold off on a lunch, maybe just have a smoothie. Big, big tip here in the tropics. Batidos or smoothies are super popular for good reason. It's healthy to have lots of fruit. Don't get it with sugar, right? Get one with yogurt or whatever. Healthy ingredients, sin azúcar, without sugar, and uh, do that on a regular basis. They're cold, they're refreshing, they're healthy. It is a thing we do here. Uh, the kids and I order them almost every day because we can get them delivered and it's fantastic. Uh, so much great fresh fruit here. It is a thing to do. Do stuff like that to hold off your meal and then just be flexible if you can and eat your meal during the storm and then relax. Enjoy the fact that there's a storm. We love doing that in San Juan del Sur in 2019. We were there during the rainy season. Every time the rain hit, we would just go to the beach, hide under one of the palapas or ranch rancheros as they are here, ranchos, and um, and uh, uh, hide out the storm. And it's they're beautiful, right? Tropical storms are fantastic. Not everyone likes storms. I love storms. I love the thunder, the lightning. We don't get that much of that here. It's much more just rain and, and wind and pounding torrents. Enjoy it, sit under the roof, watch the view as it goes out to sea, watch as it comes down in a city, watch the water flood through the streets. Do that stuff, enjoy a leisurely meal, have a cup of coffee, coffee's great during a rainstorm. Have a cocktail, things that keep you feeling warm, because it's gonna be a little bit chillier than you've been the rest of your trip, or just enjoy the break from the, the heat. Uh, it's a great time to be outdoors, but under a roof, sit and relax and say, this is how we're going to chill. That's, that's the biggest thing, right? do more activities in the morning, more chilling in the afternoon, uh, rather than a lot of us naturally will chill first thing in the morning and save our activities for the afternoon. Don't do that. That's going to mess up your schedule simply because you didn't take advantage of the times that are likely to be good. But as far as the overall itinerary, I don't think it's going to affect very many people very much. It's all just time of day and allowing for a little bit more flexibility because the rain can mess up whatever you are planning on a particular day. If you're trying to schedule everything to the minute, that's going to make it a lot more tough. If you're flexible, it's going to pretty much not affect you at all. Those of us who live here, we get used to it and knowing it's going to rain in the afternoon is just part of everyday life. And it's just rain, right? We go out and go in the rain all the time and just run from thing to thing, bring a hat, whatever. And, uh, and it's not so bad. If you are going to bring cameras and do stuff, then you're going to be more affected. Do you need certain light? Do you need certain conditions? Be aware that the rain will mess with you. But if, if you're just taking a, a, whether you're coming as a tourist and you're just on vacation, you want to go see the museum, go do a trip, right? Some things are going to be better in the rain. Some things are going to be worse. Museums are great for the rain. Ferries, okay, right? Hikes on a mountain, bad. <laughs> and uh, uh, plan around that. And if you're here to look at houses, actually it's a great time to be here because you can see how houses or properties behave when there's a lot of water. And then you can kind of, it's easier to extrapolate what they'll be like dry than to extrapolate, extrapolate what they're like when they're flooding because there may be problems you never imagined. Uh, the water comes up in the street, the water comes up in the middle of a house, things flow across the property, whatever. So if that's what you're doing, that can be really beneficial. I hope that that answered your question and is useful uh, and saves you some, some headache with your travel stuff. And as always, get down, ask more questions. Let me know what you guys need to know about Nicaragua, Central America, Latin America, traveling in the region, whatever, if you'd like to support the channel. And I gotta mention, We've got this promotion going on uh, with, where Mr. Anonymous is giving 10 or is matching coffees for anyone who buys 10 coffees or more uh, via buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller this week. 
he will match it. So if you give 10, he gives 10. And what we're trying to do is one, promote the new channel that we have, Nicaragua 360. That's Nicaragua 360 on YouTube. It's just calm, relaxing, 360 degree videos of Nicaragua. So if you're liking the stuff on this channel, that's without me talking, but you can look around with your mouse. Or whatever. It's really cool. Check it out. It's fun. It's just a video. Go watch it. Um, there's several up and we're going to get more up as the week goes on. And uh, to promote that, he's doing this matching. And if we can get enough views over there, he's going to kick in an additional 15 coffees. Uh, but the matching is a really big deal. We've already got a number of people who've done it. Thank you so much to everyone who has. My goal is to get to at least 10 people doing the 10 coffees because I'm going to be able to get a brand new, uh, well, new to me, a used, being responsible, Sony ZV-1 that I really want to use to get even more great, amazing footage of Nicaragua and travels and stuff for you guys and for me. I, I love playing with cameras. I love making this content for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy when we get new equipment and are able to do new things, the 360 cam being the, the really new thing that we just started using on the GoPro today because I'm in a hurry. Uh, but if you could support that way, anything is great, but the 10 plus coffees really does a lot this week because of the matching. So if you want to do that, and if you'd like to reach out to us about uh, any help with relocating, whether it's just having a phone call to talk about relocation or need actual assistance on the ground, just email us at info at relocatenicaragua.com. And we're very slow getting back to people because we are absolutely overwhelmed. Not so much with that, with just everything this week, but we're getting to it all uh, and getting to people and we're going out and showing houses and stuff. So we're very busy, which is great. And uh, thank you all for that. And as always, like and subscribe, share on social media, tell your friends, stay tuned, and I will see all of you tomorrow.